Ladies and gentlemen, today is August 12th, 2014. And this is the Kane Kale Show, episode 192, where we learn to be better artists, and today is Tutorial Tuesday. And today we're going to be doing a tutorial on using photo references to create your expressions for your characters in your comics, in your novels. That doesn't really make sense. But for your drawings, we will be looking at those things. But before we get into that, we need to take a stroll down the lovely lane because you guys have been submitting so much awesome art. That's not art. That was not art. That pink haired girl, awesome art. Kind of awesome art. I don't know why you guys are like submitting photos of me now. Like that's really weird. But we got tons of sexy ladies, lots of sexy naked ladies too, because we've been doing tutorials on the subject. So uh, yeah, that is to be expected here. And sorry for younger viewers. You have now seen a naked lady. You have seen a full on naked drawn lady. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy that. And I love this. This is so awesome. It's Sejuani. It's young Sejuani and young Kevin Tuggles. I absolutely love that. So thank you to everyone who has been submitting your art as usual. And for those of you who have not joined us yet, please consider clicking the link down in the description below or just typing in that URL down in the bottom left and join us and come get some cookies. All right. With all that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and get into our tutorial. And as you can see, I have gone ahead and prepared some very flattering photos of myself. These are actually ones that I used a little while ago for another project I was working on called Pauldron. And I was basically setting up and creating faces for that project. And I will show you basically what came from that. So um, this is what we're going to be talking about today, mostly. So I used most of these on a character called William. And I can show these because I've been given explicit permission by my awesome client to be able to show things like this. So um, you might recognize a few of these kind of going through here, but I was supposed to concept the face for this character and then subsequently basically come up with a bunch of expressions. But the challenge that I always have is capturing subtlety, capturing subtlety and expression. And believe me, I used to be one of those artists that would say, huh, yeah, you need a photo to draw an expression. You need a photo reference to do whatever it is you're doing. A real good artist wouldn't have to do that. They should just be able to pull everything out of their minds and never have to look at anything else, you know, to, to get the job done. But then I realized what a stupid idiot I was and the fact that photo reference actually makes your drawings look amazing because you're actually referencing from real life. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And I'm going to be showing you a couple different exercises that you can do for yourselves and I'm going to be uploading these for your drawing pleasure to my <laughs> DeviantArt account afterwards so um, but yeah let's go ahead and just get started and I'll show you basically the things that you're gonna want to be looking at whilst you draw so let's go ahead and pull out a uh, good note-taking color here and let's get right into it okay so the first thing that I would do when I'm looking at this face is let's go ahead and just like sketch in, let's go ahead and sketch in the uh, just facial shape that we're going to be working with, okay? So I usually like to draw like a circle, put a little half line through it. That's basically where I'm going to be setting the eyes more or less. And then I draw a chin down from that circle, okay? You guys have seen this many, many times, millions of times. You don't really need to have me explain it to you, but, or maybe you do, I don't know. All right, so I'm focusing on mostly, we're focusing on relative placement of the facial parts, right? Because one of the things that's really bad to do is you don't want to <laughs> draw your face onto whatever subject you're drawing. You don't want to just copy it. What I want you more to pay attention to is the relationships between the just just like what's going on with the face okay like for instance one of the most uh, telling signs of this expression is the fact that my eyebrows ha have now been lowered to the point where they are covering my eyes once you reach that point it, it creates a really cool expression and I really feel it's the it's the real flavor of this uh, expression and you'll notice that there's certain things in every expression that really are telltale signs that really push it to that next level. But first we'll start with this one. And I really think it is, it has to do with the eyebrows covering the eyes. 
right? Even if you take that away, look at how I just traced that. I just traced my own face, took away the thing, and you can see the expression right there, just from those simple lines. And this is what I want you guys to start exploring and uh, studying with your photos. I want you to study the simplest possible way that you can create your expressions with as little lines as possible. Because this comes in really handy when, not only when you're doing comics, you know, like me, I'm doing comics, I do stuff like this all the time, uh, but it can also come in handy when you're drawing really detailed things, such as splash screens for League of Legends. Because, believe it or not, when I was drawing things, they would always start out as this. They would always start out as the simplest version of the expression that I could create. And oftentimes, I tell you guys this all the time, when I'm working on the comic, I oftentimes reference the original, I reference the original sketches because I feel that that is where most of the expression gets captured. You know, when you refine all these things, if you spend too much time on refining too early, then you will lose, look at that later, <laughs> you will lose what you're trying to capture. You'll lose the, the expression. So, um, so this is basically number one, okay? Now pay close attention because there is a little bit of my eye actually peeking through there. And if you wanted to get really like detailed, you'll want to remember that, right? So with our line sculpting technique, you erase a little bit of that eyeball out of there, right? And again, it gives it almost like that evil look because you can't see my pupil. You can only see the white of my eyes. Again, subtleties that add to your awesome expressions. So I love doing stuff like this. In fact, I really want to do it more in the comic because, you know, I always tell myself, oh man, I really want this expression to look a certain way. And then I'm like, oh, but I don't have time to take a picture of myself. I just got to wing it. All right, I just got to wing it. And then eventually, I, I don't know. Every time I draw with a photo reference for an expression, it always looks better. That's just bottom line. So another thing, if you want to talk about more detail, you could leave the face like this and it gets the, it gets the expression across properly, right? But if you'll notice up in here, there's now folds happening, like with the cheeks. See how all of my, like basically all of my cheeks are getting pushed up into my eyes, like I'm like doing this. That is also very important, right? Just like the cheek muscles and everything is kind of being scrunched up and you're getting the uh, dimples, dimples in your cheeks there. So let's draw those in and watch how that improves the expression. See that right there? Ah! Ah, it's always good to keep it simple. Simple is always better, I believe. Put in little details here and there, and then you'll get something like that, okay? So now I hear what you're probably saying. Keenan, that's great that you can draw a picture of yourself, right? I could draw a picture of myself all day, right? But what if I need to do an expression for a girl character? What if I need to take a picture of my manly face and then translate that over to a woman? I'm gonna show you how to do just that as soon as I finish drawing this because I actually really like the way this looks. <laughs> I really like the way this looks. So there's example one, and I want this to look good when I put it on DeviantArt. I mean, I guess I could just, I could just clean it up a little bit more. We're done. In fact, I'll just do that. Let's move on. Moving on, moving on. All right, so which one of these would look good on a girl character? Hmm. Ah, this one here. Okay, so we'll go to the other end of the spectrum. And uh, so we have bearded manly man over here. We have bearded greasy Mexican man right here. And we wanna turn this into sexy woman, okay? Now, how do you do that? How do you do that? Well, I'll show you right now. <laughs> Again, it's just gonna go back to what I was talking about. We're talking about referencing the relative positions, right? Relative positions. Don't draw your nose and your eyes just pay attention to what's happening with your eye. See, it's making this line right there. Pay attention to the location of that eyebrow. See how this one's lower, this one's higher. This eye is open, looking that way, right? And then what you'll see is, let's kind of just draw this in like that. In fact, I might actually just bring this down. You can even do this, this exercise yourself if you'd like to, depending on, you know, obviously your style. But see how when I take this away, now we, we still have that expression right there. 
In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that, because I don't want to just trace it. I, I don't want to teach you guys to trace. That is bad. You do not trace. Do not trace. You can trace to learn. When you actually get down to the nitty gritty, you must draw. You must draw. Okay, so we've got this face, and it doesn't really look like a girl's, right? It doesn't look like a girl. But now I will show you how to do it. Okay, so did I just hit caps lock or something? What did I do? No, I did not. What? What's going on? What did I do? Oh, I switched it over to pencil. I don't know how I did that. Brilliant. Okay, so let's draw this as a girl's face. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off with the same thing. Drawn, man, look at that circle. <laughs> that is a beautiful circle. Start off with a circle, okay? And let's go ahead and draw our softer womanly face. Softer, right? And let's pay attention to, again, eyes are going to go kind of right, right? A little bit lower than the midway section of the circle or halfway point of the circle okay and one of the things that I actually usually like to do is I like to line the nose up right at the bottom of the circle more often than not it seems like it lands there so it's a good start okay so let's start with that now you'll notice a couple things immediately one of the things is <laughs> that I have one of the things that you want to do to make it look more like a girl's face is you want to not accentuate the jawline quite as much as, uh, I mean, I have a pretty feminine jawline, but you want to make it even skinnier. Basically just like gradate it down and try not to make it too angular. There can still be some angularness to it, but obviously not as uh, wide jawlined as our male counterpart. Okay? And then we are going to draw in the smile, right? Same thing, basically. I like to draw in, for me, this is my personal style preference, right? I like to draw in the upper lips, kind of like this M shape. I like to think about it like this. So it's like their lips go like that, right? Makes this little M shape. And if they smile, you get something like that, okay? And then you've got this brush that is not working. Why are you not working? Okay, that is really bad. For some reason, my computer has just decided to stop working with the hotkeys. Why are you doing this to me? All right, you know what? We're gonna just restart it. We're just gonna save it and we're gonna restart it. It's okay, this happens, this happens. Good thing. I know what I'm doing and we stay professional. We never make mistakes on the show. And I already like the way the show's going enough to not restart it. So let's get back to it. Uh, uh, oh, dang it. Where, where is it? Where is the file? Where is it? Oh, it's right there. <laughs> it's on the, it's on the, the desktop. Just like I thought. Okay, did that fix it? Hey, that fixed it. All right, we're good. Sorry about that technical difficulty. But let's get back to it, shall we? So I like to think about that M shape. And I really like to accentuate the upper lip. Bottom lip, I can do something like this, put a little shine on it. You know, shine on. If you want to add a little lipstick in there. Okay, so we're already on our way to a beautiful womanly face. Now... Let's get back to this. Let's get back to our good old fashioned uh, relationship theory, okay? So one eyebrow is gonna be like this. This eye is going to be making this shape, okay? Let's add a little bit more thicker eyelashes onto there. So we got something like that. Erase a little bit more of our guidelines. We don't want lines on our forehead. That just is not right. And the other eye is going to create a similar shape, right? Depending on your style preference, you can do whatever you want, but I'm gonna stick pretty close to this, okay? So you're gonna have something like that, okay? And something I really like to do is go back in and erase a little bit, so it creates basically the iris right into the eye, and you can go in and erase again, and it makes like the whole like shine on the iris. I don't know, I like to keep it pretty simple. Now let's uh, add in that other eyebrow. 
and voila. We have created a womanly face without drawing our face on the woman. Which is always a good thing. You never want to do that. Because people can spot it from a mile away. They're like, that artist just drew that his face on that woman. And that's just, that's wrong. So, um, but now let's talk a little bit more about details, right? Because there are some details that happen with the girl's face that I feel are not as important. You want to basically play them down. You want to play them down. Because someone once said the more lines you put on a woman's face, the less attractive she will become, okay? So you want to make sure you're really careful and selective about what lines you choose to put on the face. So if I were to just do some quick shading, I really like to put like a little bit of shading underneath the eyebrows. That always looks nice. Um, her chin is actually a little bit large. I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down a little bit. Let's have something like that. And that's pretty dang good. I actually want to, okay, so this is where subtlety comes in. Notice how the shape of my eye is doing that, you know? is basically like that, and then the eyebrows there. This eyelid is being closed a little bit, and that is helping to accentuate the fact that she is smiling large, okay? So we want to also see that right there, see how we lifted the eyelid? It helps to, again, it's those subtleties. It's all about those subtleties that will uh, make your expressions feel believable. And that is why it's very important to reference photos when you're doing stuff like this. All right, so let's go ahead and put this in. Now you'll notice how there's this big line across my cheek here. These are the lines that I personally like to play down on girls. Like you'll notice how I didn't draw them in. As soon as you draw them in, she starts to look old. She starts to look older. Now if you want to have some sort of dimple going on with the girl, again, it, just, it really just depends on how realistic you paint it. I feel like the more realistic you paint girls, like the more detail and shading, you can get away with more subtleties. But if you're just drawing like this, I usually like to keep it simple. So like that, I'll put little dimples like that, but nothing more, nothing more. Okay, let's go back to the nose. I wanna kinda of clean up the nose a little bit. I kinda of wanna move it up a tad. So then we'll have something a little bit more like that. Okay, that's good. And again, just sculpting. Sculpting, line sculpting. Little subtleties. I like to put a little bit of blush on the cheeks. It always makes them look cute. And let's go ahead and finish up this girl. So I hope that will help you understand a little bit more where I'm coming from. When you use photos for references, don't just draw your face on there. Take the relationships of the facial features and then incorporate them onto your character. That way you don't got a girl with a man's face, if you're a guy, if you're a guy. And vice versa, don't draw your guys with girly faces. Actually, unless they're from Final Fantasy or something. There you go, <laughs> you can get away with that. But very little, if ever, can you get away with the girl with a guy's face. <laughs> All right, so don't forget it. I'm just going to finish this. This girl's actually pretty cute. I'd take her out for pizza. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yo, what's up, baby? So anyway, uh, <laughs> let's just uh, draw the rest of her shoulders there really quick, actually. Let's give her a wider neck because girls do not wear shirts like that all the time. I mean, don't get me wrong, nothing wrong with that. Just more girly to have shirts like this. Okay, you know what, I feel bad for what I just said, so we're gonna give her short hair. I'm not gonna go into the whole like, girls should always have long hair, that type of crap. <laughs> you can wear small neck shirts, you can have short hair, I don't care. And there you go, there's our politically correct tutorial woman. Now let's go ahead, now that we spent all this time on these ones, let's go ahead and just wrap it up. And let's do our remaining four in the middle here. And I'm just gonna go and I will demonstrate basically without talking too much. It's kind of doing whatever. She still has a really big chin. Chin is still slightly large. 
There we go. But you know what? That makes your character, and I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Because I believe that beauty can be found in everybody. No matter what they say. All right, that's enough. I will draw more of her later. Okay, so let's move on to this one. Okay, same exercise. Circle. Our head is pointing upward on this one, so we want to make sure our ellipse through the circle is going that way. Draw in the chin. Okay, you can already see our face coming together. So our eyes are going to be right below this line. Pay attention to not only the relationships, but the positions. Notice how my eyebrow is raised very high. Very, very high. It's way up there. Okay, and then the nose is actually covering a little bit more of my other eye. So you're going to get something like this. Like that. The nose is going to come down like this. Again, the nose, I really like to think of it in terms of two planes. So it's like this is the under plane, this is the upper plane. I've talked to you guys about this before. This is always what helps me draw noses, is see this line right here? See where that shine comes in? That is the under plane of the nose. And then once you start going up here, that's the upper plane. Always remember that. And you will live long and prosper in the land of noses. All right, so getting back to it. Getting back to it. Drawing in that nose. Actually, let's keep it simpler. Keep it simpler. Even simpler. So nose is right there. And then I've got my lips like protruding like this. They're like sticking up and outward. So we've got something like this going on. And I think my eyelids are closed just a little more. There we go. Cool. And there you have it. There's number, uh, I don't know, that one. <laughs> On to the next. And another thing that's really important, guys, is to always pay attention to the relationship of your head and your shoulders because that also adds a lot to your expression. A lot of people will draw expressions, but the face is the same every time. So it's like, here's me happy, here's me mad, right? But what they don't realize is when you're happy or like see here specifically, I'm like looking over at something. I'm curious about something that's going on over here. And notice how my neck is like elongated, like my head is like perked up. And the in relationship to my shoulders, see, my head is sticking way up. It's all about body language is another really important thing that you need to consider. And again, why it's good to take pictures of yourself because you might sometimes overlook the subtleties in your body language, all right? Similarly, notice here how I'm like yelling or I'm like scared of something. My shoulders are like tensed up. They're tensed up and they're closer to my face. And that again is a subtlety that you want to pay attention to. So let's go ahead and start with this one here. And I'll make this one even simpler, okay? Because we're trying to capture the essence of our expressions in as simple lines as possible, or as little lines as possible, basically. So we're doing this, doing that. Now, we've got wide eyes. We've got wide eyes like this, okay? Pay attention to the eyebrows. They're like this, like that. This eye is looking that way, this eye is looking that way. Look into the side. Pay attention to the eyelids. The eyelids are actually squinted upward, so you're gonna have something like this. So these eyes are way too high. <laughs> Let's move it down a notch. With the magical crutch of Photoshop, I mean skill, that I have in Photoshop. Now the nose is going to be also up like this and the nostrils are flared. And then we got big old mouth with teeth. <laughs> this one's definitely taking on a bit of a different style because we have bigger eyes. But hey, that's okay. This is actually a really tough expression to draw. 
to be honest. And I think it's because we need to make sure we don't forget this. There we go. I feel like my mouth is much wider too. Let's make that mouth way wider. <laughs> We're going to exaggerate it. Because exaggeration is also a good way to get your point across. Especially if you're working in comics. Again, it's all about relationships, okay? So don't forget it. Okay. That's good. And now let's talk about, again, the body language and the relationship between the face and the, this head is so jacked up. <laughs> I had to like redraw it. But the relationship of the neck and the shoulders. So notice how my shoulders are much further up now. And there you go. That's the magic right there. The eyes are still too high, but whatever. Whatever, you guys get the point. <laughs> moving on, moving on. This one is really scary. But it's good to know. Sometimes you just won't get it right. You won't get it right the first time. You gotta keep doing it. You gotta keep trying, keep trying, keep going. And sometimes when you have to, just move on. Okay, so let's do these last two and call it good. Mm, okay, so something that's really good about this one that I'm glad we're doing this right, right now is the positioning of the head. And we're talking body language, right? So you'll notice how my head is like tilted at you. And that in itself says a lot about the character, right? It says a lot about the character as well as the expression. Okay, so let's go ahead and drop that in. Eyebrows are quite low, but that's because we are, uh, we're tilting our head, so our brows are naturally gonna cover more of our eyes. And then you're gonna have something like this. This is basically the way that I like to draw my eyes. It's just like a line and then I draw an, an eyeball in there or basically the iris. And that really helps me to capture a lot. I don't worry so much about the bottom eyelid, like what the bottom eyelid is doing until later. I focus on that. I feel like one half is the top eyelid, the other half is the bottom eyelid <laughs> for expression. Not just the eye, I mean, of course, that's obvious. It's obvious, but we're talking like this. See, this is what I should have done with this one. I should have kept it more simple because see how you can now, you can get that expression through that and it feels a lot more genuine. Whereas here, I feel like I was trying to draw. I was trying to draw and I'm actually glad that I made that mistake now. I feel like I was trying to draw the eye. I was trying to draw it like that and draw the details in first in this one. Whereas what I'm doing here is I'm sketching in the facial expression and the facial parts, but in a simplified form. And that allows you to capture the expression and then from there you build off of it. Think of it as setting a foundation. Set the foundation for your house first, then build all the bells and whistles and all the good looking stuff on it, right? Don't try to build a perfect front porch and then branch off of that a nice little kitchen and then a patio and all that stuff. You wanna build a good foundation first then make it look good. Yeah, I like that. I like that analogy. Very good. Cool. I'll give this guy different hair. There you go. There you go, different hair. Hope you're happy. All right, now let's move on to our final one and then we're gonna end today's show. But I hope this has helped you guys out. I hope this has helped you understand a little bit of what to do, meaning this one here, and what not to do, meaning this one here. Don't do it like this. And definitely don't leave your face looking like that. 
All right, moving on to the final one. This one is also going to be quite challenging because now we have a character that is looking up. But if we take into account what we did here and we sketch it out, we will not have a hard time with it. So our character is looking up. Okay, let's sketch in the simplicity, right? Simple tops of the eyes in relation to the tops of the eyes. We've got this for our pupils. <laughs> We've got these big old eyebrows. See, you can already see it coming together. Because we are staying simple. Keep it simple, stupid. Okay, now let's draw the, uh, the second eyelid here. Yeah, that's good. Nostrils, you can draw them like that. Yeah, I'll just do them like that. And then we got the mouth, big old mouth, like this. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I like it. Now let's erase some of our guidelines. And there we have our sad character. Hmm. I actually really like this one a lot. This one looks really good. Because we built it off of a proper foundation and I taught you at the same time that I taught myself. <laughs> Once again, to not keep, and this is actually a common problem that I run into in the comic, believe it or not. Even though I'm working in a simpler style, I try to define things too quickly. And then what happens is my expressions end up looking stiff. They don't look believable. And yet, how long did it take me to draw this right here? It took me, you know, a, a couple minutes. And yet it is more believable and it feels right. And yet it has less detail. So that is what I want you guys to focus on with your expressions. This will be uploaded to my DeviantArt account. So probably by the time you guys are watching this, you guys will be able to click the link down there. And you guys can go check it out for yourselves in high def. And with that, we're going to conclude today's tutorial. I wanted to say thank you guys for joining me on YouTube as usual. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Keenan Lafferty. I'll see you guys next time. Till then, take care.